Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, Israel, most high Christ bless. I'm Captain Aon with Houston, Texas. Um, this is another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains. To my right, I have Officer Obadiah. All praises. And today's topic, we're going to dive into praise and worship. And, you know, I know when you hear that, you think of Christianity. You know what I'm saying? You're thinking all the hooping and the hollering. You know, you're thinking the falling on the floor and speaking in tongues, as they say, right? And that's what we're going to touch on, just the beginning part of this. And then we're going to touch on how to truly worship God. What does the Most High expect from us as his people, as the children of Israel, all right? So from there, from me, to start off with uh, Mark 7 and 7, all right? This get is an understanding of how to worship God. Let's go. This is the book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 7. Mm -hmm. How about in vain do they worship me? How teaching for, how be it, in vain do they worship me? teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. So this is the key part and foundation of America, of the Christianity as we know it today, all right? The doctrines of man, that's how we worship God, all right? Through the doctrines of man, in vain do we worship God because we go get into some, some vanity on how our people worship God. In their minds, they think that they are worshiping God, but they're not. They're worshiping Satan. They're worshiping the things that he set up. You understand? So from there, let's go to um, Ezekiel 8 and 14. Like, again, we're going to touch on some ways that our people worship God. Unbeknownst to them, they're worshiping Satan. You understand? Because remember, Esau's philosophies and doctrines and, and uh, customs are not his. He get them from the other nations. You understand? Let's read that. Uh, what did I say? Ezekiel. Ezekiel 8. Yes, sir. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 8, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. So it says there sit women weeping for Tammuz, or uh, other names, Ishtar, uh, Osteric, if I'm saying the name right. So on and so forth. Other gods, not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not our God, but these other gods. This is where you get your, your Christmases and things of that nature from, all right? Your Easter, so on and so forth, all right? Go ahead. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abomination than these. You see that? It said, because this is one form of the abomination of worshiping these other idols. Today we see more abominations. You understand? It says, my son, see. See these people that they're wicked, that they're abominable, that they're worshiping idols. Go ahead. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. Mm -hmm. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord. So they had their back towards the temple of the Lord. So they were in the opposite direction doing what? And their faces towards the east. Toward the east. Go ahead. And they worshiped the sun towards the east. It said they worshiped the sun towards the east. Going into what? Worshiping what? Ra. Mm. The Egyptians. Okay. They're gods. That's the same thing we do today. This is called what today? Sunday worship. This is your Sunday worship church in the church today because that's what they're doing. They're going to church on Sunday, all right? The sun god, Ra, that's what they're worshiping. And Talmuz and all, anything that associates with these different gods via the Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, so on and so forth, Sunday worship, 
they're worshiping other gods. They're not worshiping the God of this Bible. Right. All right. They're worshiping Baal, the devil. Okay. And this is unbeknownst to our people. That's why we bring this truth out to get you to understand, to make it make sense that what you do today don't line up with the Bible. You understand? So from there, let's go to Mark 9 and 17. Mark 9 and 17. So we showed you Sunday worship is not of God. All right. It's not of God. Uh, yeah, Mark. This is the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which have a dumb spirit. Okay, keep it one. Okay, verse 18. And wheresoever he talketh. Uh, you started at 9 and 17, right? Yeah, 9 and 17. Okay, go ahead. Uh, verse uh, 18. So the, the child had a dumb spirit. He had a spirit on him, right? Go ahead. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. So the spirit, the sp spirit is taking control of him. All right, tearing him apart. Go ahead. And he foameth mm -hmm. and gnasheth with his teeth. It says he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth. Those are some attributes of what I saw myself in Christianity, in church, all right? In church, as they say. You have women, mainly women, falling on the floor, foaming at the mouth, saying what? We got the Holy Ghost. Do you have the Holy Ghost? No. We're going to see today what, you, what spirit you truly have on you. This is, this is our people's mindset. They think that God is dealing with them and that they are worshiping God through these actions. But they're truly worshiping the devil. Go ahead. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. And he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth mm -hmm. and pineth away. Mm -hmm. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Verse 19. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. So Christ had to had the for the deliver this the spirit out of him. Go ahead. Verse 20. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and waddled foaming. That's it. That's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Quote, unquote, that our people, our sisters mainly, but men too, that they, they receive in the Christian church. They run around the church. They do all this, this foolish stuff. It's an act, basically. Okay. Even on the land of hands. All those are acts. All right. Satan is using these, the pastors. Satan is in these brothers and sisters that's running around this church thinking they're worshiping God. Let's get a clear, a clear understanding who they're worshiping in Luke 9. Luke 9 and 51. 50, no, 41, I'm sorry. Luke 9 and 41. This is the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 41. And Jesus answered, said, O faithless and perverse generation, mm -hmm. how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. So this is the same uh, account of that same instance with that young man, the boy that had the spirits on him, right? Luke is giving you another uh, version or perspective of it. Go ahead. Verse 42. Uh -huh. And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down. Who threw him down? The devil threw him down. The devil threw him down. That spirit that he had upon him was of the devil. So when our brothers and sisters are running around churches, falling down, Walling and foaming at the mouth, that's the devil on them, not the Holy Ghost, not the Spirit of God. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 42. And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down mm -hmm. and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. That was an unclean spirit. That spirit is not of God, it's unclean. Go ahead. And healed the child mm -hmm. and delivered him again to his father. You see that? So he healed him and gave him back to his father. So showing you again, these are the spirits that our people deal with, thinking that they are worshiping the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're not. You're worshiping the devil. You have spirits on you, all right? Um, unclean spirits. So from there, go to Amos 5 and 23, all right? This is going to touch on something else that our, our people think in their own mind, because that's our people mindset, all right? They lean upon their own understanding of what? what they was taught, the doctrine of man. Not the Bible, but man. Go ahead. This is the book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. It say, take thou away from me the noise of thy song. Whose song? Us, the Israelites. Okay? Because who, who we got Fred Hammond, we got uh, the, uh, the 
Clark Sisters. You got uh, Mary and Mary. Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance, so I can praise him. No, you're not praising God with them tight pants on. You understand? This is our people mindset. These are the songs that they think. Kurt Franklin, you can't forget about Kurt Franklin, right? right. Multimillionaire, all right? All of them. But the point I'm making to you is they think they're worshiping God by their songs. The choir at the church, you got the big choir. You know, they got competition and stuff. Okay, you got the big choir singing, so on and so forth. And what? They think that they're worshiping God with a homosexual choir director. You understand? And he's not listening to their songs because they're not praising him. I'm, we, at the end of this class, we're going to read a precept showing you what song we should be singing. Go ahead. Uh, Book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 23. Uh -huh. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows. The, the most high not hearing the melody of our vows. We are a spiritual people. You understand? And the spirit of the most high is upon us. But to praise him. Not to praise because, remember, this whole system is set up. The, your Christianity today is white supremacy. The most high black, oh, uh, uh, so-called white man. Christ is a so-called white man. Everybody in the Bible is so-called white. All right? No, that's a lie. We've been told lies since coming over here on slavery, all right? Jump to verse, uh, what I want, 21. The book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 21. Uh -huh. I hate, I despise your feast days. He said, I hate and I, I hate, I hate, I despise your feast days. He talking about, he talking about us as well, when you go back to, to the scriptures in uh, Isaiah, uh, was it 3 or 13? But it, you can correlate it to today, all right? Because what feast or holidays do our people keep, right? Thanksgiving, Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, New Year's, Fourth of July. You was in slavery. What you celebrate? Every day. All right. Right. You got grandparents' day. You got all these days that don't have nothing to do with the Bible. Right. Okay? Most I say honor your mother and your father, not make a day to honor them. Right. You probably do that every day. Okay? Uh, keep going. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. I hate, I despise your feast days. And I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Right, because the Most High is not in that. That spirit is not of the Bible. Your Thanksgiving, you you you're uh, praising, uh, or commemorating a slaughter of the Native Americans. Your people. Our people, right? We're not into that. The Most High God is not in that. Right. Okay. He's not in that. All right. So, again, these are things that we think that is of God that we're doing that's against God. Mm. It's time to wake up, Israel, all right? From there, go to 1 Corinthians 14 and 3, all right? 14 and 3, because this is going into something else in the Christian church, how they think in their mind the way we've been taught that they're worshiping God, all right? You ready, Cap? Oh, yes, sir. Okay, this is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3. Uh -huh. But he that prophesies speak unto men to edification. And exhortation and comfort. It said, read it again. Read it slow. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 3. Uh -huh. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification. It said, speaketh unto men of what edification? To edify them. To give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. All right, go ahead. And exhortation and comfort. Exhortation and comfort. Comfort in what? Their spirit. Comfort in what? Them so they can have hope in what? The scriptures and the prophecies that the Most High God has left here for our records. Right. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 4. No, jump to oh, verse, verse uh, yeah, verse 4. four, four. Yeah. Verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. So now it's going into speaking because it's edifying, right? Right. Giving hope. Okay. So it's talking about speaking in an unknown tongue, right? Go ahead. Edify himself. Edify himself. Because these brothers and sisters that be in the Christian church be speaking wop ba ba loo bop about bamboo, um, whatever they be speaking, okay? They be speaking things that them themselves don't even understand what they say. You understand? What did you say? I don't know. The spirit, the, the spirit was in me. The spirit was speaking through. No, that wasn't the spirit speaking through you. If you didn't understand what you were saying, how can you edify somebody else? It makes no sense. Go ahead. But he that prophesied edifies the church. Edifies the church. That's your goal when you're prophesying. You're edifying the church. 
like the bishop do. He edified the church. The church is who? The people. Israel. Okay. Jump to verse 21. Verse 21. In the law it is written, mm -hmm. with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. So when it's talking about speaking in tongues, it's talking about speaking another language to, and this is a precept to, what's that, uh, Isaiah uh, 28, okay, and 11. It's talking about speaking in other languages to who? Your people. To edify them, whether it be Spanish, whether it be uh, French or Creole. You understand what I'm saying? That's what it's talking about. Portuguese, whatever country in which we're scattered, because we're scattered through the four corners of the earth, yeah, in, right. in, in every land on this on this face of this earth, right. the most I have our people there. And when our people wake up in those places, they're going to be able to do what? Edify yeah. their people right. in that place by the tongue that they know. Mm -hmm. You understand? Right. Uh, was that it? No, you can finish your case. Yes, sir. And yet, for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. That's it on that cap. Right. Because, you know, we bring the scripture out of their camp and they still don't believe. All right. And even to being in this truth and, and bringing it out, the right understanding in those countries scattered abroad, they still won't hear God. Right. You understand? Uh, it's the most highly put the spirit on people, man, Israel, to wake up. All right. So let's go to Psalms 47 and 7. All right. Let's see how to truly worship God. All right. It's not complicated. You know, you just got to pick up this Bible and open it. And, you know, read and have a teacher to teach you and under and break it down to you to under, so you can understand it. And then you'll get it. Right, Go ahead. Right. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 47, uh -huh. verse 7. For God is the king of all the earth. Mm -hmm. Sing ye praises with understanding. It say, for God is the king of all the earth. He created this, right? Mm -hmm. This is his creation. It says, sing ye praises with understanding. Understanding of what? The scriptures. Right, right. Understanding who you are according to the Bible. The black Hispanics are the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. All right. We went to slavery by way of what? Slave ships. Right. All right. Bought and sold throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. This is history. All right. That's the understanding that and uh, how you're going to send forth praise to the most high through understanding the scriptures. All right. From there, let's go to John 8, 32. Okay. This is the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Uh -huh. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The Bible just said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We will understand what the truth is, but let's go to Matthew first. That's what I wanted. Matthew 24 and verse 4. All right, because we got to understand that these the, the, the way the world set up, you have... Esau, he runs the world. He has control over everything that we intake in our spirit. All right? Read that. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. That's the key thing. Take heed that no man deceive you. Because we've been deceived with everything that I brought out thus far of the Christmas, Thanksgiving, Sunday worship, speaking in tongues, running around the church, so on and so forth. I've showed you that these things are not of God. Right. They're of the devil, right. all right, which deceives the whole world, like it says in Revelations, okay? So that's what you, the mindset you have to get first. Now we're going to see what the truth is, all right? Uh, what I want, Psalms uh, 119, 142, yes, sir. Let's see what the truth is, because the scriptures say, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall say, set you free. I'll butcher it. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, 142. The righteousness is the everlasting righteousness, and the law is the truth. See that it say the law is the truth. Understanding our job as repentant Israelites is to turn back to the laws of God. Right. That's how you worship God. All right. The most I don't want you to sing him a, a song and dance and a jig like Esau wants you to do. He wants you to uh, utilize or personify or uh, put on the commandments okay the actions thereof not just speak and talk all right so let's go to john 4 and 24 all right john 4 and 24 we go see what christ said read that the book of john chapter 4 verse 24 mm -hmm. 
God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, we have to worship God in spirit and in truth. We just read to you what truth is, right? Right, right. The commandments. Let's go to what spirit is. Uh, John 6 and 63. Yes, sir. Everything go back to the commandment. The most high wants us to obey him. Right. right? Go ahead. This is a book of John, chapter 6, verse 63. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Mm -hmm. The flesh profiteth nothing. We cannot put our emotions. Our emotions and the Bible don't go together. All right. It's like oil and water. They don't mix. All right. It said it's the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited nothing. The spirit is the Bible. It's right. going to tell you. Which quickened it, meaning to make alive, to change you, to change what? Your mindset. The lies you've been taught to truth. Go ahead. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You see that? They are spirit and they are life. The words out of what? The Bible. All right. Not my own words. Not what I've been taught as a, as a, 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 a youth growing up, a toddler growing up. No, what the scriptures say. Okay. From there, let's go to Jeremiah 3 and 14. Jeremiah 3, 14. Because it's some, some things that we did, and this is a brother and sister coming back to the understanding of how to worship God. All right? And the understanding who they are according to the Bible. What we did against our God. That's why we worship all these other gods. All right? Let's read that. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 14. Uh -huh. Turn, O black backsliding children, said the Lord. For I am married unto you, and I will take you, one of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. It said, turn, O backsliding children. Who? Children of Israel. Right. His chosen people. We've backslid. We've turned from God. Right. He said, turn around. Turn back. Come back and follow me. Okay? He said, I am married to you, the children of Israel. He said, it's going to be one from a city and two from a family. That's how it is today. When you read Matthew 10 and 34 down, he say what? Your foes shall be there of your own house. Mother, father. That's right. So you're going to have your family that turns against you. Why? Because you're now following the word of God. You're right. worshiping in him in spirit and in truth, right. the commandments. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. So what you see today is the leaders that's rising up. Okay, from the bishop, deacon, captains, officers, soldiers, so on and so forth. The men that are awakening, awakening to what? The commandments, right. to the laws, to what God say do, and they're doing what? Teaching others. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. That's what your pastor, T.D., Jakes, Creflo, Bynum, so on and so forth. That's what they're supposed to be teaching you. The commandments. Right. Let's get that. Uh, Malachi 2 and 7. It's supposed to be teaching you the laws of God. Everything go back to the laws of God. Not what we want, how we feel. Well, I want to go because they say you can worship God any day, but he has his specific day that he wants you to come together, which we're going to read. You understand? Not when you want, how you feel. No, what God says. All right. The, the instructions are the instruction manual is already here for us. Right. All right. We're not rewriting nothing. He said, don't add or take away. We ain't doing none of that. Go ahead. This is the book of Malachi, mm -hmm. chapter 2, verse 7. Mm -hmm. For the priest's lip should keep knowledge. The priest is the same as your pastor. All right? An elder, so on and so forth, a bishop. Right. That's your priest. It say he should teach what? Knowledge? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And they should seek the law at his mouth. They should seek the law, the law at his mouth. The commandments. Right. What do I have to do? Like the young man came to Christ in uh, Matthew 19, 16, right? Mm -hmm. What can I, what do I do to get the kingdom, Christ? All right. Keep the commandments. It's not hard, but we have a struggle within ourselves because of our flesh. Yeah. All right. So from there, let's go to Baruch. Oh, yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. That's it. He the messenger of the Lord of hosts. We're the ambassadors of who? Christ. All right. Just like Christ said, I came not to do my will. But the will of him that sent me, my father, which is in heaven. Okay. So let's go to Baruch 2 and 30. Baruch 2 and 30. Because through the process of time, our people are waking up. And as you see, this truth is coming out to you right now. Go ahead. 
This is the book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30. Mm -hmm. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. That's our people. You want to continue in Catholicism. You want to continue in uh, white supremacy doctrines. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because you are stiff-necked people. Who don't want to get gifts every year mm -hmm. for, for everything that, you, that Esau has made up? For Valentine's right. Day, for Mother's Day, for whatever day. Mm -hmm. Christmas, all right, when you were the gifts for Christmas, all right. all right, we don't, we forget all these things because we don't search the scriptures and we don't, we don't go search history as well. Okay, go ahead. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. You say in the land of our captivities, we're going to remember ourselves, meaning we're going to bethink ourselves, as it says in 1 Kings 8 and 46 on down, all right? It's going to come back to us because we're going to hear this word and the spirit of the most high in Christ is going to wake our spirit up. As you see us here today, we're woke. All right. We're not sleep no more. Right. We're not following these doctrines of man anymore. Right. All right. We're not worshiping pagan days. We're worshiping God's days. Okay. That's right. Let's go to Tobit 3 and 1. Tobit 3 and 1. Get a little more. And then we're going to go to some, some commandments. Tobit 3 and 1. This is the book of Tobit, chapter 3 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then I, being grieved, did weep, and in my sorrow prayed, saying. So Tobit was grieving, and he's praying to God, just like we, we grieve today. Right. We're lamenting for our people every day because we pray that they wake up. Right. That's what the Most High God said. His prayer is that it's all Israel be saved. We know they're not because what well, we just read, they rebelled just in Baruch, right? Yeah. Stiff but stiff-necked and stiff-hearted. They don't want to follow God. Right. But our prayer is that they return and follow the Most High. All right, read that. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 15. Mm -hmm. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Till they acknowledge their offense. Till they acknowledge the sins that they have committed against me. Right. You understand? That's, the, that's our job. Acknowledging the sins that we've committed and our forefathers. Right? right. Go ahead. That's right. And seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. In our afflictions. In our afflictions. The Trayvon Martins, the, the uh, what's the brother? Amari, uh, Amar, what was his name? Amar Aubrey, Aubrey, there you go. Um, and, and then you got also uh, Floyd, Floyd, uh, Floyd uh, George Floyd. George you, Floyd. You got Breonna Taylor, Breonna so on and so forth. You have these examples, all right, of our people getting what? Persecuted. All right. And our people looking for justice and hope. He said, in your affliction with these, all these things that's going on, the coronavirus, mm -hmm. you're going to seek him. Mm -hmm. You're going to ask him, come to the word and ask why, Lord. Mm -hmm. And the prophets are here to give you the answer. All right. That's go why ahead. we all cry, Captain. When that's we're right. In trouble, we always cry to him when we're in trouble. There you go. Go there back you to 40, go. 44, Cap. No, you could drop that. Go to Leviticus 23. All right. Le Leviticus 23, because I'm just going to touch on a couple. But the laws are in here. You know what I'm saying? How you worship God is in the Bible. All right. Uh, 23 and 1. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So he's talking to the children of Israel about what? The feast of the Lord. Right. The first one is what? The Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is the first day. Then it goes on to Passover. Uh, which is unleavened bread. It goes on to uh, feast of uh, first fruits. Okay, so on and so forth. When you read this whole chapter, it goes through God's days and what He wants you to keep and commemorate, like Passover. You're commemorating what? Him delivering okay. us, the children of Israel, right. out of where? Egypt. Egypt yeah. right. You understand? Know so not worshiping uh, Thanksgiving. All right. Not worshiping uh, what's the other one? Christmas. Because in, in winter, we were doing what? We were, we were thanking the Lord for doing what? Helping us rebuild a temple over in Maccabees. All right? Feast of dedication. Okay? In the wintertime. All right? So, understanding Israel, the laws, how to worship our God, and what, you, what he requires of you is in the book. All right? And the prophets are here to give you those instructions, thus said the Lord. That's right. All right? So, uh, drop that. Go to Leviticus 11. 
and uh, 46. Like I said, it's a lot of laws I could touch on Israel, but I'm just touching on a couple. Um, but you get the point. Go ahead. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 46. Uh -huh. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. Next verse, Captain. Yes, sir. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. You see that? So the 46 said this is the law, the law of the beast and the fowl. So it's telling you the laws of what? The animals. Verse 7, 47, what you can and can't eat, what's clean and what's unclean unto us. All right? The, the, the Bible is here. The instructions are here. The way to worship and praise God is here. Okay? From there, go to uh, Psalms. Psalms uh, 149 and verse 1. Psalms 149 and verse 1. So, in a nutshell, the Most High God wants us to turn back to the commandments, to worship him in spirit and truth, which we found out today that all those, the spirit and truth goes back to what? The laws of God. That's how you worship God, by obeying his voice. Everything you read in this Bible is what we're supposed to do right. as a nation of people. Right. All right, read that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 149, verse 1. Uh -huh. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song in his praise in the congregation of saints. The saints is Israel. Right. You read the verse before, a chapter before, I'm sorry, uh, 148 and 14. The Israelites is the saints. Go ahead. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. We have to be joyful in our king. Remember, right. the book of Psalms are what? Songs. All right, and praising who? Our God. You understand? The God of Israel only, as it says in Joel. Okay? And it said, uh, the children of Zion be joyful of the in their king. Remember, we stop uh, praising the most high God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. We stop seeking after him. We start seeking after what? These are the gods and worshiping them. All right, go ahead. Verse 3. Let them praise his name in the dance. Mm -hmm. Let them sing praises. Unto him with the timbrel and harp. Right, with the instruments. What do they do today? You have the sisters uh, twerking in, in, in the church. That's that's the dance that they're doing for the Lord. What the, this don't make no sense. Okay, that's not how God wants you to worship him. Right. All right, go ahead. Verse 4. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He said he taketh pleasure in his people. Remember, he's a just God. He's sending us through all these afflictions right. to do what? Acknowledge him. To seek him. All right. Once we turn back to him, we're going to follow these commandments. And then what? Receive a reward at the end. He's not just going to give you something for doing nothing. Okay. Go ahead. He will beautify the meek with salvation. It said he will beautify the meek with salvation. That's that deliverance that we're looking for. Yes, sir. As the scriptures say, Moses was the meekest man on earth. Mm -hmm. Meek meaning what? He followed what God told yeah, him to do. Very humble. The instructions he told Moses to do, to go free the children of Israel, he did exactly that. Okay, go ahead. Verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Mm -hmm. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. And that's to come. Now remember, this future prophecy, all right? But it's telling you, what's going to be in our mouth? The Bible. The commandments, the laws, reproving our people, telling them, reproving them that Sunday worship is wrong, that Christmas, Thanksgiving, all these things are wrong to the Most High God. Okay, go ahead. Verse seven, to execute, uh, excuse me, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. Right, it said to execute the vengeance upon the heathen. And this is going to first start at who hands? The Most High God hands when he sent his son back. Right. This is instituted later, after that, all right? Through us, but, okay, go ahead. Verse 8, mm -hmm. to bind their kings with chains mm -hmm. and their nobles with feathers of iron. So you have Donald Trump with, with chains on him. Mm -hmm. You're going to have all these so-called kings right. or leaders right. or presidents or dignitaries, whatever, in chains and feathers of iron. 
going where, as Isaiah 14 say, in the captivity. Yeah, all praise. To be our slaves. Right. Don't think that these other nations are getting away with anything. But if you join hand in hand with them and continue to worship white supremacy, you're going to be in that same case with them. Right. You understand? The two thirds of Israel. Go ahead. Verse nine. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. This is what we're praising the Lord for. This is what we're crying out to the God, to, to our Lord for. All right? To us worshiping him and keeping these commandments, we will reap all these benefits right here in Psalms chapter 149. But it's for you to make those choices and decisions on that path that you go go in life. You understand, Israel? So with that, Israel, I pray that y'all got something from the class. Uh, this is another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains. Till next time, shalom. Most high Christ bless. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.